there is a new plugin for Cypress like, with this particular view. You can see that when we perform a, uh, well, a request using SciRequest, uh, usually we have to go ahead and open the console, right? Check the logs and there is the response, right? But with this plugin, as you can see, we're gonna have uh, an inbuilt test runner view, right? Where we can check the authorization, where we can check the headers, the response, the cookies, and, and all the details that happen in that particular uh, request, right? So I wanted to explore to, uh, today with you guys this amazing plugin. It was developed by Philip, who is an amazing uh, Cypress ambassador. You can follow uh, him over here in GitHub. Also, he has a, a channel in YouTube, right? And, and different courses, right? In the Test Automation University, and Udemy as well, I didn't know that, <laughs> but he has a lot of content for you guys, so go ahead and, and follow him. But let's start exploring how we can get this particular plugin working together with Cypress. Let's do it. Okay, masters, I wanted to use this small application, the to-do's application that I have here, and I can add a new to-do, right? I can update the new to-do as completed, or and I can also delete it, right? And the, the important thing here is that um, every single action that I'm performing in the in the UI, right, is gonna trigger a request. You can see that, for example, when I create a new to-do using the test uh, value, right, it is basically sending a post request to the localhost 3000 slash to-do's endpoint, right? And you're gonna see that the payload is, well, a simple object with three properties, completed ID and title, and well, the response is basically the title and the completed property, but now it has an ID, right? Um, so the same happen if I delete the request, you can see that it is just sending an API request using the delete uh, request method and the preview and the response is nothing. The important thing here is that you can see that the application that I'm using is sending API requests and I wanna well, see the results then using the, the Cypress looking API, right? So let's go ahead and continue exploring now the, the well, the plugin itself. At this point, you're probably wondering how we can install this particular plugin in our project, right? So I wanna explain, explain you how you can get it working. The first step is that uh, we need to install a new package in our project. You can use uh, the NPM or Node Package Manager if you have it installed, or you can use Jarn as well if you want. It. In my case, my computer is, uh, well, is working with NPM right now, so I'll be well, just opening a new terminal here, and I can run the command npmi cypress plugin api, right? It is going to install the package, and as you can see in the package.json, here we have a new dependency. That's amazing. Um, but now, if you check the documentation, we need to import the plugin into your cypress support end-to-end.js file. Of course, if you're using TypeScript, it works as well. Actually, you can see here in the documentation that we can create a new type, right? And we just have to add it if we want to. Okay, that's amazing. So if I come here to my project, I'll be looking for the support folder and I just have to click on the end-to-end.js or TS, depending on uh, what you're using, right? And then as you can see in the instructions, right? What we have to do is basically uh, import a new plugin, right? which is the Cypress plugin API. So I am doing that. I am just calling and importing this plugin in the configuration file, and that's it. Now we have a, well, our project up and running, right? We just have to open it as runner and see how it works. So in the next part of this video, I wanna explain you that, and let's see how it works. All right, masters, the way that this plugin works is pretty simple, right? We have to use a new command, the Cy API command, and we have to be aware that it, it is gonna work exactly like the side request command. But in addition to calling your API, it will print our information about the API call in your Cypress runner, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look of an example. So um, let me grab the information uh, of a new to-do, right? The request. So I, I'm gonna create a new to-do, right? Here it is, and if I check the network, um, tab, here we have the request that I want to emulate, right? When I want to create a new to-do by request, it is important that we mention or we specify the request method. It has to be post. Uh, I need to specify as well the request URL and the payload. This is the information that the API needs to publish a new to-do, all right? So that's important and I want to do it. 
So as you can see in my project here, I do have already a Psy API, that site that he has filed. And this is basically a simple describe with a neat inside, right? Um, what I'm planning here is to explore how we can create a new to do by request using the plugin that Philip has developed. Okay. So I'm going to create, uh, or um, I'll be writing the new command Psy API. And you can see here the hints about how it works. You can check the different examples if you want to, right? Uh, but I already know what I want, what I want to do, right? You, you, I explained you uh, what I wanted to do in a, in a few seconds ago, right? Um, so I have to open the network part. I'm sorry, guys. Hmm? And well, the first thing that I need to specify is the request method, right? So I, I need to tell the Psi API command that it has to be a post request. Then I need to specify the request URL and I'll be sending that over here. And then I need to specify the payload, what I need to send to, to the API, right? To get it posted in my application. So it is a simple object like this one. So I'm gonna copy the object itself. I wanna explain you what is inside. You can see that it has the title, a property and the value new to do, right? because that's the value that I wanted to post. Then I have the completed property and it is set to false. And then I have the ID. I can get rid of this value if I'm wrong because the ID can be automatically um, generated, okay? So that's it. Now I have a um, well, the example configured, okay? So I'm gonna, I want to clean my, my application, all right? Let's do it. And it is empty, all right? Um, I want to execute this particular request going to my test runner and looking for this JS file that I created before, which is Psy API, right? That's the file that has the example that I just created using the new Psy API command over here, right? So um, I just have to click on this and you're going to notice that here we have the view that the plugin is promising, right? Um, you can see a lot of details about it over here and you can see for example the body that i sent the payload for uh, to 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 this particular endpoint or request url and in the right part you can see a response right with a um, with an object it has created automatically an id it has the property completed set to false as i well uh, requested and it has the title new to do right you can see here the headers that were automatically created when i am as, as part of the response headers right and here we have the cookies this particular case no cookies were set and also you can see the status 201 created the duration and the size and that's beautiful guys that's the the magic of this plugin right let's imagine that you want to combine right the um, your UI tests with uh, your API tests, right? Or you want to work together, right? With the, the combination of commands. Um, and by default, right? As you can see over here, if I visit the application at the beginning of my test, then I send a request using the Psy API command, as you can see over here, right? Um, and then I try to look for an element in the UI. Probably it is working. I'm not pretty sure, but it, it, it seems to be working fine. Um, but the snapshot is not automatically updated, right? And I want to have the possibility of keep working with the UI test, right? So uh, he prov provides us a solution for that. And it is uh, as simple as include an environment, a variable set to true in our cypress.config.js or ts, all right? So um, that's it. I just have to go to my project. And as you can see in the cypress.config.js, I just have to create the environment um, property here and I specify the snapshot only set to true. By default, it's in false, of course, okay? If I save this file and I re-execute again the test runner, you're gonna notice that now as soon as I use the command Psy API, okay? Now, when I do a Psy contains after that, you can see that we keep working with the UI as, as always, right? And that's so beautiful. I, I really liked it. So um, the next step here is going to be a, an, an another thick trick that 
I'm not going to reproduce, but I want to show you that you can hide credentials, right? Um, he's providing us here in a scenario, right? Let's imagine that you're going to be using an authorization header, right? And you're going to be getting the, the authorization header uh, by uh, a token, right? By, by a Cypress environment, okay? And this value is, is well, mm, working in, in this in this approach because you don't want to expose the value itself, right? So we can send another test option here, which is environment high credentials true. And when the request is, um, is done, right? You're gonna notice that in the headers part, the authorization is gonna be a kind of a hidden, right? It's gonna have a lot of asterisks instead of my um, or, or the, the token that you don't want to expose in your test runner, right? That's beautiful. And also, uh, here we have another amazing thing. And let's imagine that you don't want to migrate all your Psi requests to Psi API, right? Because that could cause a lot of uh, headaches. <laughs> so I'll, I'll get back to Psi request here, okay? And you're gonna notice that now I don't have the the beautiful view of this plugin, right? However, I can use um, another environment property here, which is request mode true, all right? I am gonna configure that in my environment uh, variable or in the environment object here, right? And you're gonna notice that now the side request is gonna behave right like a Psi API. And that's beautiful guys now you can see that it is working fine and and we can have the the new way of how it works uh, the the sci api working like a i'm sorry the sci request working as a sci api so guys at the moment that i'm recording this video that's the highlights of uh, this particular plugin i hope that you enjoy it and i want to hear your comments i want to hear uh, what you think about this plugin do you find it useful? Do you find it, uh, I don't know. I think it's so useful and and it allows us to, to check requests in a simple manner, right? And we have all the information that we need to check in, in, so in, in, a, in a beautiful view, right? That's all that I have to say for now. So masters, thank you very much for clicking on this video, for watching it, and it was a pleasure. See you in the next one. Hit the like button, support, uh, this channel subscribing and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.